the button on the top of your baseball cap is there purely for aesthetic purposes. By the way, this little thing has a name. Professionals call it a squatcho. Its initial function was to hold the four panels of the cap together. As hat making improved, the panels stopped needing it to hold together, and squatcho was removed. But hats didn't look the same without it. Soon after, the squatcho returned due to popular demand. Originally, high-heeled shoes weren't intended for galas and proms. Back in the 10th century, horse riding was pretty tough with flat-soled shoes, and many riders' feet would constantly fall out of the stirrups. Higher heels helped deal with that problem. The grip was much firmer with them, and they grew in popularity. It wasn't long before they became a fashion accessory to match stylish outfits. Notable people wouldn't want to be seen without them. Riding a horse with fancy heels was the equivalent of owning a luxurious sports car. Even though heels were worn mainly by men at the start, ladies picked up on the iconic trend in the 17th century. It's been one of the biggest ever since. In ancient Rome, salt was so precious that people even called it white gold. With scorching heat and no fridges, its purpose was to preserve food, mainly meat and fish. As a bonus, it made everything tastier. Sal, which is salt in Latin, was used instead of money to pay salaries. Here is where the word salary originated. Rice is the oldest cultivated food in human history. Its origins as wild grass started in a small valley around 15,000 years ago in Southeast Asia. Today, it's served globally as a staple diet and popular ingredient to 3.5 billion people. It would be difficult to imagine a world without video calls you use through your phone camera or laptop. The technology has helped game-changing innovations like working from home. Still, video calls' original purpose is far from how we use them today. The technology was introduced to confirm if the coffee was still in a pot. In 1993, researchers at the University of Cambridge found it frustrating when they took a break to get a cup of coffee, only to find that the pot was empty. So, they invented a device to monitor it and hooked up a camera that provided their computer with a live stream of the coffee pot. Thanks to these researchers, we can work in pajamas now. We know Albert Einstein for various achievements, but there's something he co-invented that goes overlooked. Together with his student, he invented a modified refrigerator. It's not like the ones we use today. In the 1920s, fridges weren't quite as safe as they produced poisonous gases. He wanted to create a safer version that didn't require electricity, without moving parts, and only needed a heat source to operate. Unfortunately, there wasn't enough funding, so the project dried up. Later, in the 1950s, electric fridges became popular. But in 2008, engineers from Oxford University revived this retro design. They're still working on it, but once they finish, the Einstein fridge will come in handy for rural areas without power and people who want to live off the grid. That random QWERTY design doesn't make things easier. In the 1870s, Christopher Scholz invented a layout that ensured typing was twice as fast. But with commonly used letters next to each other, it was a bit too fast, and the machines constantly jammed. So he then developed the QWERTY design. It forced typists to adopt a pecking style. This way, they would search for a letter and slowly type with their index fingers. The keyboards remain unchanged even today, and people all over the world have somehow adapted to them. The plastic end of your shoelace is an aglet, and people have used it since ancient Rome. Sure thing, they had no plastic back then, so those aglets were made of stone, glass, or even metal. Extra wealthy people could accessorize their shoes with precious metals, like brass or silver. What came first, the TV or the remote control? The technology that functions in the remote is older by several decades. In 1898, Nikola Tesla created a machine to control mechanical devices with radio waves. Initially, he tried selling the idea of a radio waves device operating I.O. through remote control boats, but the potential buyers were not interested. He was way ahead of his time, as remote controls were finally used with televisions in 1956. As engineer Percy Spencer initially invented something brilliant in 1945, he was working on a new vacuum tube, the magnetron, which was used with early radar systems. While working on the project, he found that the chocolate in his pocket had melted. 
Realizing the heating potential of the magnetron, he used it on corn kernels, which turned into popcorn. Then, he tried testing it with eggs, but things got a bit messy. So once the yolk was washed away, he built a metal box, keeping the energy within, and the first microwave oven was built. In 1733, a duke in England requested William Kent, an architect, to make a traveling device for his kids. William accepted and built the first ever stroller, but nobody had to push it. Instead of handles, it was built like a carriage and pulled by a goat or a small pony. Only a few were made as it was pricey. More than 100 years later, in 1848, the first stroller with push handles became available and more affordable. Police are often associated with donuts, and there is actually a reason why. During the 1950s in the USA, police officers that worked night shifts found it hard to locate anywhere open for a midnight snack. Donut shops at this time were family owned. They were working hard throughout the night, providing fresh donuts for the coming day. The shops were vulnerable at night, becoming the perfect relationship, nourishment for the police and extra protection for the shops. Popping bubble wrap is an excellent source of relaxation, and it's also helpful with delicate packages. In 1957, two engineers glued together two shower curtains, trapping the air bubbles between. This is how the first bubble wrap was made. The result they were looking for was a sort of textured wallpaper. Still, it didn't go well on the market. Sometime later, they tried to sell it as insulation for greenhouses, and once again, they failed. Everything changed in 1960 when IBM needed to ship delicate computer parts. The bubble wrap was perfect, and they continued to collaborate. Using maps with your phone has become a far easier way to navigate, but the old-fashioned handheld maps were once the only option, creating a competitive industry. So much so that map makers would draw in phantom settlements to avoid rivals stealing from them. These fake towns were called a copyright trap. However, one of these fake settlements became real. Aglo in New York was drawn into a map by General Drafting Co. Another competing map maker had also included this town on their own, and the copyright trap was sprung. But in court, they found that in 1950, a general store had actually been built there. And the owner assumed that Aglo was a real area based on the map, so he named the shop after it. So there was no violation found, as technically Aglo was real, thanks to that general store. In 1943, Vesta Stout from Illinois was working with securing parcels. She was disappointed with the poor paper tape, as it would fall apart when wet. So she asked her boss to try to make waterproof tape. Her request was ignored, but she wrote a letter to President Roosevelt with an idea of how to make a better tape. Not only did she explain her concept, but she also provided it with detailed designs. He approved the idea and ordered the changes. The new tape was so helpful for freight transport that everyone wanted it, and they started selling it at hardware stores. In the 1950s, many people would wrap air ducts, and it was then deceptively named duct tape. Still, the adhesive on the sticky side wasn't suitable for cold and hot temperatures, which caused the tape to fall off. Despite this, people continued to use that tape for almost everything else. Is this safe to eat? We sometimes see strange dots on our potatoes and wonder if we should just throw them away. Here are 10 eat or toss facts. Did you know that every year, 119 billion pounds of food is wasted only in the United States? To put it in perspective, this number means nearly 40% of all food in America is wasted. People throw away food if they don't have confidence in the ingredients. They're being cautious and it makes sense but what if the food is safe to eat and only looks weird? The first item on the list is beef. When it comes to meat, people naturally get extra cautious. Imagine you buy some raw beef in the store. Later on, you realize it's got some brown spots. If you toss it immediately, hear me out. This is normal. In fact, you can see brown layers also inside the beef. Bright red color equals fresh meat, huh? Not necessarily. When the meat is first cut, it's maroon. If the meat is quickly vacuum packaged, it will keep that shade. But if the meat is exposed to air for like 15 minutes, then oxygen will cause a change in the look to red. The redness can turn brown when the biochemical reaction starts. This can take a few hours. 
Workers at the grocery stores grind the meat several times a day to achieve that bright red color because they know consumers are cautious about maroon-looking beef. If the beef is wrapped in an oxygen-permeable plastic, it turns bright red after exposure to oxygen. As long as the meat smells and feels fresh, and if it's been stored properly, it should be safe to eat. Have you ever come across dark lines under a shrimp shell? This one has a similar story to beef. Black lines on your shrimp's flesh are related to a natural phenomenon. They gradually occur after shrimps are taken from the water. Meat is exposed to oxygen, and the blackness gets more visible over time. Here also, the pattern of the animal itself can be a factor. These black lines can be a naturally occurring discoloration on the shrimp. Think of cats. They also have different color patterns, but they're the same in terms of species. Next time, you can conduct a mini experiment in your kitchen. Put a couple of shrimps side by side and observe the mild differences in the shrimp's color patterns. Shrimp will have a distinct bad odor when it's no longer edible, so if it smells and tastes fresh, don't toss it. Should you eat moldy yogurt? That green substance on the surface doesn't look appealing at all, but if you scoop it out, you seem to have clean yogurt underneath. The short answer is toss it. The mold could be seen on the top only, but it has probably gone deep. Not to mention that it'll taste bad. Many molds are harmless, but some produce toxic substances. Green mold is a type of penicillium. Does this word sound familiar? That's the same type of mold used in the antibiotic penicillin. Don't get too excited. Eating moldy yogurt won't magically cure bacterial infections. It only spoils your dairy product. In 2013, there was an outbreak related to one line of yogurts. The company handed the products to stores as usual. After some time, they received customer complaints. They said that the yogurt looked like yogurt soup and tasted really old. Turns out that a type of fungus probably released some carbon dioxide. It made the product fizzy and bloating. Blech. The company and another independent scientist both said that this fungus in question wasn't usually harmful to people. Yet, more than 200 people reported becoming affected by it. So, these sorts of things can still happen. You should trust your spidey sense. If you've ever been lucky enough to see some mold in a freshly opened package, reach out to the manufacturer. You'll potentially save others from facing the same scenery by notifying the company about a systemic issue and preventing potential future product waste. Plus, the company probably wants to make amends and either reimburse your sad yogurt with a happy one, or better, they'll give you coupons for free products. Why do avocados sometimes have brown dots inside? Technically, it's edible, but you might not want to eat it. Avocados are a source of many vitamins like C, E, K, and B6, as well as healthy stuff like magnesium, potassium, and more. The avocado works hard to become such a health storage. Nutrients, water, and sugars wander around this fruit. Yes, technically, avocado is classified as a fruit. Anyway, avocados have their own transport channels, like veins. These channels are normally invisible to us. Until something goes out of the ordinary, the avocado may be stored in too cold temperatures for a longer time than it should. As a result, the tissue cells might be weakened and start to deteriorate. Experts say that after the fruit is harvested, if it stays in the refrigerator for a few weeks before you buy it, vascular browning can occur. This phenomenon becomes visible after you keep the avocado at room temperature for a few days. Don't be hard on yourself, it's not because of you. So should you eat it or toss it? You can eat the brown dotted avocados, but you may want to taste them first. They might not taste good compared to a regular one. What about the white area under the potato peel? Eat or toss? This area is also like dark bruise marks, but it's not black. If the outer layer of the potato looks normal, that odd looking white knot is not mold. The moldy potatoes deteriorate. They'll get softer, wrinkled, or squishy. As long as the exterior of this potato appears clean and regular, there's probably no harmful microbial growth inside of it. These strikingly white areas can be shaped due to potatoes being bruised, possibly in the field during the harvesting period. To sum up, you can eat it. There's also an issue of white smears coming out when we slice potatoes. You see the marks on the cutting board? Experts say that some potatoes have a higher level of water and starch content. 
As a result, your cutting board gets a bit messier than usual. No need to worry about it. I'm going to carry on with another form of potato. Not because I love every version of potato and I can eat it in all meals from breakfast to dinner, but because I want to know. What are those brown spots on potato chips? Should we eat or toss them? Consider these as minor imperfections. They don't affect the safety of the chip. They're there again because of the bruises they get or as a result of frying. Sometimes you see that your garlic is trying to make more garlic out of itself. Yep, it has sprouted. The question is, is it okay to eat sprouted cloves or should you toss them? If the green sprout is in the center of the garlic clove, that's fine. Be aware that the taste of the garlic will be stronger than it usually is. It will still be perfectly okay in a cooked meal since it'll be alongside other ingredients. The taste shouldn't be that harsh. Can we eat an apple with worms? Most people can't even stand the idea of accidentally eating an apple with a worm, but that's a cultural thing. So the answer is yes, we can eat it. After all, worms add a little protein to the fruit. These animals don't carry any harmful parasites. They make their way into the apple. The entrance point of the fruit might have an off flavor since it got sort of rotten in time. Besides the taste, the rotten part is all safe to bite. What might not be so safe is eating the fallen apples though. Those have probably been hanging out on the ground for quite some time. This period might be enough for the harmful bacteria from the soil to sneak into the apple. There were some cases where people experienced health issues by drinking unpasteurized apple juice made from dropped apples. Yeah, the ones that interact with unhealthy bacteria. Did you know that chickens can jump and fly too? Domestication of the chicken dates back to at least 2000 BCE. They do have the required feathers and muscles to fly, but they don't do it much anymore hundreds of years after they were domesticated. But if you give them the right motivation, they can do that. If they think the other side of the fence is cool, they can jump up to six feet. Some hens hop on the trees to roost. Picture a tree with a couple of chickens on it. Looks so funny. Their motivation is safety. The tree serves as a cover for them in the daytime and protects them from winged predators. Similarly, at night, the tree turns into a shelter from wind and rain and the possible attacks from ground predators. This doesn't have to be in the wild. Farms where chickens can wander around freely also have tree nests. Some sneaky chickens leave their coop and jump onto the trees. So, many chicken owners search for ways to keep them under control. Hey Siri, search for how to deal with jumping chickens? I'm now moving on to everyday items and the secrets they held. The twist ties and plastic bags on bread packs don't have random colors. They are color-coded based on the daily bread baked. Each day of the week has an assigned color. For example, blue twist tie stands for Monday, green for Tuesday, and red for Thursday. Now you can figure out how fresh your bread is. Color codes are helpful for employees too. They can easily spot the old loaves on the shelves. There's a popular saying, you are what you eat. It turns out that our guts are also there to make us happy. Serotonin is the feel-good hormone. It's also a neurotransmitter. Many of us immediately associate it with our brains. Yet, interestingly, around 95% of the body's serotonin is produced in our digestive tract. Many of us often use the words herbs and spices interchangeably, but these are different seasonings. Spices come from every part of a plant or tree, like root, seed, or bark. But herbs are the plant's leaves. We generally add spice to food in roasting and during cooking. Herbs release their aroma faster, so we add them at the very end. Do you ever feel you've been watched and discovered that you're right? Well, that spider sense-like feeling is called gaze detection. Your brain senses when someone is staring at you. Research explains this as a sort of defense mechanism. A direct gaze can be a symbol of dominance and that can be a potential threat. Humans evolved with this feeling in time. Strangely, it works when the person looks right at you. If their gaze is off just a few degrees to the left or right of you, your brain won't react this way. What about the urge to re-watch your favorite movies or listen to your songs over and over? You're not alone. This habit has some benefits for your mental health. 
This behavior eases your mind. When people feel overwhelmed, they'll have less self-control and be less motivated to complete hard tasks. You are drawn into The Office's first season again because when you watch, listen, or do something familiar, you don't have to spend the effort to monitor what you're thinking. So it's a good way to have a quick mental reset. Here's another feeling. Imagine you're enjoying the sunset on a terrace or at the top of the Eiffel Tower. Out of nowhere, your inner voice whispers, what if I jump? This isn't coming from a darker state. You know, it's just sort of a feeling that appears when you're high up. There is a name for this. The call of the void or the high place phenomenon is a relatively new research topic, but more studies are on the way. Jim Carrey's great performance in The Truman Show is surely remembered. Did you know that The Truman Show delusion is an actual thing? The phenomenon is an issue related to cognitive neuropsychiatry. People with this delusion believe that they're being filmed and that the footage will be broadcasted for entertainment. There was a time when aluminum was more precious than gold. I know, it's hard to believe. We now wrap our sandwiches on this everyday item. If we go back to the 19th century, we would see aluminum as a hard to get element because it was literally hard to obtain until innovators found a way to extract it on large industrial scales. Then the reign of aluminum was over. There are stories about the French ruler Napoleon III having an aluminum cutlery set that he served food to his special guests. We might as well talk about a time traveler's party held in 2009. The theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking invited time travelers to hang out. There was a huge banner hung up with the words, Welcome, time travelers. No one showed up. But maybe travelers had prior engagements, and that's why they didn't attend the party. I swear I'm not crying because no one showed up to that awesome party. I was just cutting an onion. Why do we burst into tears when we chop onions? Because of a particular enzyme. Is there a solution? Next time, get some damp paper towel and put it on the cutting board next to the onion. The acidity that comes from the enzyme will go towards the wet paper instead of your eyes. The ancient Egyptian civil calendar was quite similar to the one we use now. They had 365 days divided into 12 months. But instead of spreading a 31st to some months, they would add those extra days to the end of the year. Now, let's turn our cameras to the animal kingdom again. Is there a benefit for zebras to have their fascinating pattern? Scientists asked this question too and experimented. They dressed up horses with zebra look-alike coats. The coat was covering the whole body of the horses but their heads. It turns out that zebra patterns repel flies. Scientists observed that flies only go for the heads of the animals and stay away from the horse bodies. Ants are known as hard-working animals, even in the tails. That's got a legit reflection in real life. They can carry up to 20 times more weight than their own body weight. These insects have other noble qualities too. If an ant gets seriously injured, it'll refuse treatment from the colony's paramedic ant. The ant knows that it can't make it, so instead of wasting the colony's resources, this ant forces the paramedic ant to carry on without it. Camels can survive around 15 days without drinking water. Many people assume that they store water in their humps. No, nope, humps are for food storage in the form of fat. The water is kept in their bloodstream. Speaking of camels, in some countries, there's a tradition to hold camel beauty contests. For instance, a contest was held in the 2022 World Cup in Qatar as an attraction. You see a giant housefly in the house, but it flees from your ninja's hands. You might think that nature will take care of it in a couple of days, but actually, houseflies can live for about a month or two. The next fact is about an emergency on the road. Detachable car headrests can be used as an escape tool. You can break the window with the headrests if you can't leave the car by the doors. You should wedge the headrest between the glass and the windowsill. Aim a corner. Then. You hit the headrest as hard as you can to break the glass safely. You might have to hit a couple of times, but it eventually shatters. Don't give up after one try. Don't be shy. Share your wow facts with us.